Good morning and welcome to Amsterdam. Uh, it's an absolutely stunning morning here. It's really cold when the wind picks up. Wow, it really is cold. It's my watch is saying one degrees, but when, <laughs> as soon as that wind kicks in, it really is Baltic. Um, but yeah, it's really, really stunning morning. We've had some amazing light this morning. I managed to catch some photographs uh, as the I got a ferry over from the hotel to the to the main town uh, where we are now. The light was superb. So uh, yeah, got some good shots there. Uh, yeah. It, I'm actually over here not to do some street photography. I was actually here for a stag weekend. <laughs> I thought I'd stay an extra day just to get a bit of street photography in as well. Never been to Amsterdam before, always wanted to. What, the more I researched it, the, the, the more character and charm this place has got. I just could not wait to get here, especially with my camera. So I've got my uh, Fujifilm X-T3 with the 23 1.4 Prime on there and obviously the GoPro on the top uh, for you guys to f see some of the images I got. I did actually manage to do, I got, um, the rest of the guys of the stag do left yesterday, so I had a bit of a play walk around uh, Amsterdam last night as well. Managed to get some shots in the night. I've never done street photography at night. It was a, a really, really, really enjoyable challenge. I, I didn't know where to go. Obviously, the Amsterdam is famous for um, cannabis and, and red light districts, and obviously uh, I'm not going to go anywhere near any red light bulbs, but it was uh, really, really nice. There's so much charm in this little town, in this big town, actually. To wander around and get some really really good street images so uh, I think I got some good images last night um, I, I, as, I, as I said before in my previous videos if you watch them I always look for the simple compositions um, and when you when you don't know an area it's quite difficult sometimes to find those simple compositions uh, I did struggle at times last night but I think using a lot of the ambient light I managed to get some good good shots so yeah really nice bikes everywhere so whether, whether you like it or not, bikes are going to be a part of the photographs. <laughs> I have done the traditional panning shots as well, I had to go at that. I'm not a fan of the uh, the slow shutter panning shots myself. Um, I think they're okay, a bit overdone, a bit easy, a bit obvious, but when in Amsterdam, surrounded by bikes, you've got to have a bit of a go, in yeah. So yeah, the trick is to look for a nice background that when blurs, will make a good image as well. So yeah, I wanted to get, if when I did do that, I wanted to get the bike really small in the frame and have lots of motion blur as, as the main sort of feature, if you like, of the image. So I'm going to wander up to the art galleries now. We've got the Van Gogh Museum, we've got the Banksy Museum. There's loads of other stuff going on in the art quarter, I believe it's called. So I'm going to head up there now and see what shots we can get. So there's two or three museums I want to run in and out of. Um, providing they'll let you take pictures <laughs> and then we'll get back on the streets and have a look as far as uh, I've had a few questions as far as street photography a lot of you want to have a go at street photography but find that the confidence is an issue um, yes it is it's, it's an issue for, for me as well I mean yesterday I had a guy came over to me and asked me um, what I was doing and mainly his he, he was only actually drawn to the fact that I had a GoPro on the camera he wasn't bothered about me taking pictures. I wasn't actually taking pictures of him, but he came over and said, oh, what, what, what's going on? What are you doing? What are you, take, what are you filming? Um, and I, I didn't actually have the GoPro on. I was just taking random snaps. Um, and yeah, his only concern wasn't me taking pictures. It was only that I had the GoPro on that he said, oh, please don't film me. I was like, oh, well, I wasn't filming you anyway. But uh, yeah, I very rarely, um, London, I've had a few people come up to me and sort of say, um, what are you doing with the camera? And literally the best thing to do is just be polite. And if people come up to you and say, um, yeah, just take my picture and say, yeah, it was a really good image. I like the way you walk through that light over there. I love the way you walk through that doorway. Oh, thanks very much. I was waiting for somebody to walk through there. Here, have a look at the picture. So you can at least show them the image and they can sort of look and see where you go. They normally look at it and go, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. And obviously, most of the time, well, for me anyway, most of the time the person is that small in the frame that, you know, they're not even really a part of the image. They can't even recognize themselves. So they normally look at it and go, oh, yeah, I like that. And then I've got a business card or I can send them, take their email address and send them the photograph. I've never had anybody ask me to delete a photograph. Uh, in fact, no, no, that's a lie. I've just remembered. There was two girls leaning over the uh, the Tate in the Tate on the bridge on the Tate Gallery, and then um, they were leaning over trying to take a selfie. They were leaning right back, and it was really, really funny because they had the selfie sticks in the air and they were pointed. You could only just see their heads like up their noses. So I took that photo because I thought it was really funny. And she came over. She said, oh, "Do you just take my picture?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah." She said, she looked at the picture. She said, "No, oh, no, please delete it, please." Delete it. And I thought, well, do you know what? The picture wasn't good. Uh, really, it was, it was funny, but it wasn't good. So I was happy to delete it. And, and I'd rather stay in a good mood for the rest of the day. Obviously, I don't want to upset anybody. So if somebody ever did come up to me and say, look, I'd rather you delete the photograph, then of course, it's no problem. I'll just delete the image. Um, the chances are it's, you know, it, you can get that image again if you really wanted to or, uh, yeah, you, you want to you want to keep your, your happy vibes, really. You don't want to go around upsetting people. So if people do come up to you, just be approachable, smile, and just say, "Hey, man, thanks very much for walking through the frame." Uh, I'll be waiting. For, you know, make a joke of it if you will, uh, but don't be afraid of it. Because if I mean, I I've been a photographer for 20 years, and I suppose 
part of it is because I'm, I'm used to being in a place I'm normally supposed to be there taking photographs. So when somebody comes up to me and asks me a question, it's normally I've normally got a position to be in. I'm normally there for a reason. So I suppose I'm used to it. But if somebody did come up to me and say, oh, mate, what are you doing? What are you taking photographs? I'd say, oh, yeah, I just took a picture of you walking through there. Do you want to see? It looks really, really good. Thanks so much. I wouldn't be afraid though, just get out there. I mean, yes, it's getting out of your comfort zone, but just get out there, have fun, enjoy it. And if somebody just come up to you and gives you a bit of stick, um, that's them, you know, that's, uh, there's no reflection on you. And as long as you're polite and smiley, just, I tell you what, when you take a picture of someone, just be prepared for them to come up to you. That way you can expect it if they do, you've got something to say. Um, and don't be surprised, always prepare for the opportunity when somebody comes up to you and says, oh mate, what are you doing that with, with the camera? And just just expect it and then you're, you're not going to be caught off guard you're going to have something to say uh, and you, you're, you're going to find it a lot easier to deal with anyway um i'm gonna i'll try and if i get any opportunities like that I mean, i've got the gopro on there if anybody does come up to me I'll, I'll keep filming it so you can hear what goes on but it never happens really and i wouldn't want it to discourage people from going out and having a go at tree photography you are I, you, as long as you're in a public environment there's not really anything anybody can do if you go into a private building and somebody says oh you're on my property please don't take any photographs then you know it's different but um, on a public property like walking around amsterdam like i am today or walking around london there's not really anything anybody can do uh, but obviously it's just just good for being um, for, for the rest of your mood for the rest of the day just to be in a better mood just say okay mate no worries I'll delete it and then just carry on don't be afraid of people coming up to you though it's just not worth it and it will obviously discourage people from having a go at street photography um, yeah I, I, I'm just more than happy for somebody to come up to me and say yeah mate was it what are you doing but it doesn't bother me because I'm gonna show my picture and if I think it's a nice one I think yeah yeah have a look at have a look at the picture thanks so much for walking into the frame I've been studying for 20 minutes <laughs> just make a joke of it I don't know but uh, don't be afraid of it and uh, yeah get out and enjoy street photography um, this is actually my fifth time doing uh, street photography dedicated dedicated shoot so I'm still very new to it I'm still learning it myself especially with night time wow what an eye-opener but um, yeah just be but be prepared for people to come up to you it won't happen but if it does have something and just make make light of it and just don't be afraid anyway we're gonna i'm gonna stop rabbiting get on with it and hopefully that's helped a few of you i know i've had a lot of questions people saying how do you especially with filming as well i mean you guys you're probably not gonna be walking around with the gopro on the top of your camera so i won't worry about it it's me that gets uh, approached especially with this camera as well anyway i'm gonna get on with it i'm gonna head to the museum hopefully get some shots in there as well so i'll see you in a second So I just grabbed a shot then at the train station. I'm not sure I, I, what I liked about it was the lines. And I could see this guy coming down the top of the top of the escalators and really liked the lines. And it was going to make quite an abstract shot. But I thought, is it too easy? I grabbed the shot anyway. It was quite an easy photograph to get, just pointing as I went up the escalator. But is it too easy a photograph? Uh, I think I like the image as a bit more of a challenge, a bit more rewarding. I don't know. Let me know what you think. found this alleyway which I really really like this light here and obviously the path leading up there I'm just gonna wait for somebody to walk into the shot that will pre-focus at f1.8 up there and wait for them I've got the shot at 1 60th so uh, it'll freeze up and obviously I've got it on burst because it's not actually this busy that busy this time of night so stroke a look if I get somebody walking past there I found this alleyway which is just just off Dam Square. Um, just goes up between a restaurant and a pub, I think. I don't know. Uh, but the, the restaurant's kicking off this lovely light through here, and they've got this bike here which is catching the light, Ma amazing. Um, and I did actually miss someone walking. Uh, there was a girl walking up that way, um, and by the time I got round, oh, she, she'd gone around the corner, so I missed her. So I'm just going to wait for somebody to come around that corner. Um, either walking this way or that way and there'll be a silhouette by the time they're there so I'm just going to pre-focus on that corner at f1.8 uh, about 160th, uh, 160th per second just to freeze them a little bit um, but what I really really like is this light down here and that light bulb up there which is looking horrific on the back of the GoPro but uh, that light up there does look really really nice so yeah really really nice leading 
leading image up to the sub the subject of that that top corner. I'm just gonna wait around a bit now. Just got back to this tunnel and it leads me back underneath the train station to the boat which is down there that the, crosses the canal I've got to take. And I've noticed that the um, well, not now, but a minute ago when there was less people. There's a really, really amazing leading line with these lights going down towards the vanishing point, which is obviously over there. Um, and yeah, there was less, far less people a minute ago. Look at this for sunrise. This is right in the edge of uh, the town. I'm just sort of right by the uh, on the reflections by the um, entrance way to, to the train station. I'm just waiting for people to walk through there because the reflections there are absolutely insane. Just so focus there and wait for somebody to walk through. Uh, that scooter would be good. Um, but the reflections are absolutely perfect. So F, I'm at F4 now just to give you give me more depth of field but focused into the middle of that walkway and then uh, another bike coming out of there would be quite cool. I'm absolutely loving this architecture right by the uh, where the ferries are but look at the sunrise it's absolutely stunning and it's catching as well uh, a bit of the side of the the architecture there looks absolutely fantastic. So a nice portrait shot uh, using these leading lines here going all the way down. It's absolutely stunning. I, I love it. Fantastic. Wait for somebody to come into my bottom right hand third, free focus. Um, Right then, so I've just come out of what is basically a giant bathtub art gallery. Uh, absolutely amazing place. Giant plastic bathtub, it's incredible. Stedlik or something like that it's called. Probably got that wrong. <laughs> um, and that's really, really cool. I managed to get a shot in there. I think, I really, really like it actually. And I was walking around. And art galleries are really, really good for street photography, for catching people candid. Uh, I mean, in there, there was a shot with the, a, a guy and the, there was two paintings, a bloke and a woman, and both of them had their eyes going across 
um, basically where this bloke was stood. So I waited for the bloke to walk into the scene where yeah, we would have had both paintings looking at the guy. Um, and one of the paintings looking at him in disgust, which I quite liked, because uh, he looks like he's on his phone, so he looks like he's looking at him just in disgust. And there was a girl who went and sat and watched one of the shows in there. And she knew that I was taking a picture because there was nothing behind her and everything was pitch black. Um, and she sat down and she looked over and she could see the camera pointing straight at her. But I had my, my, my heart set on getting this photograph. So I thought if she does come up and say anything, I'm happy to show her the picture. And I was half expecting her to, to be honest, because she kept looking over. Um, but it was really, really nice, really, really dark background. And just the light off the screen was catching her, um, catching her eyes and uh, the front of her face when it, when it, when it lit up enough, it was quite a dark thing when she was watching, so it was uh, waiting. I had to wait about 30 seconds to get the shot. I felt quite uncomfortable, but I was prepared. Uh, yeah, I wanted the photograph, so <laughs> do what you gotta do, haven't you? I think I've got some nice photographs in there. Again, it's just basically waiting for people to stand in the right spot. So you find a photograph or find a painting or whatever, it's a composition you like, and then just in case of standing there and pre focusing and waiting for somebody to come into the scene. So I think I've got some good images so far this morning. Just walking down this side street here, notice this building work going on in this building here, in this house, and the guy was using a wheelbarrow you know, across the top up there, was, with them lines on the back, but I was a bit far away from it, but I did, and he was coming towards me, so if he was going sideways, that would have been a great silhouette profile shot, the wheelbarrow up there, see if we can get it, see if we can get it again. So this is back at the uh, the ferry which is going to take me to NDSM which is over in that direction. Just waiting in now, just come back out into the rain. It's not very nice at the minute but I want to pre-focus and wait for a bike to go past because the reflections look really good. So let's just see if we can back at 50, uh, 20th of a second F11 and uh, pre-focusing and just going to wait for a bike to come past. It's friggin' hundreds of them so it won't take me long. But, uh, the reflections underneath them now are much better. I don't really like the panning shots I've done before, but just pre-focusing about five meters away from me and just waiting for somebody to come past. Oh, so cold. That was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed today. Um, <laughs> it's been really good fun. Um, I've got to say, my number one favourite thing about Amsterdam is the people. They're just brilliant. They've, I've met some absolutely fantastic, friendly people and they can't do enough for you. So if you've never been to Amsterdam and you're thinking about it, even if it's not for photography, come over here, you're going to love it. Um, yeah, number one favourite thing about Amsterdam is the people. Um, the history, the culture, the buildings, uh, the food, everything is just, yes, it's a little bit expensive in places, and man is it busy as well with so many tourists here but it, it really is accommodating the people can't do enough for you i can't i can't rate it enough i've really enjoyed it as for for, uh, for street photography it's it's a bit of a playground really it's yes it's difficult there's so much going on here there's literally <laughs> i didn't know where to start there's there's alleyways going everywhere there's old buildings there's uh, uh, modern buildings that have got lo lots of like simple um, compositions to be had, there's museums, everything. It's a bit of a playground for, land for, for street photography, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, as far as having any issues with anybody coming up to me, take it, asking why I'm taking the pictures, none. <laughs> I didn't have any issues whatsoever and apologies for the, for the wind if it's, it's absolutely blowing a gale. I've come into the shelter, it's throwing it down right now, so it's, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely definitely time uh, to call it a day um, but no I had a few people which when I was taking the pictures um, I, I, I was kind of waiting for them to move over into the composition or to look in the right direction or for, or for somebody to get out of the way and on one or two occasions I could tell that the person was sort of looking at me and they kept looking back and saying is he still pointing you know what it's like somebody's pointing a camera at you you know don't you so yeah on a few occasions I, you could see that the person was well aware that I was taking their picture but I was more than happy for them to come over and say oh mate are you just taking my picture um, and, and yeah say so, yeah yeah sure I really appreciate it here's the picture what do you reckon it's, you, you know and just show them. I wasn't had no issues whatsoever for somebody to come up to me and ask me um, what I was doing. Um, so it, it was fine. Um, I didn't get that. You, there's a number of times I thought I was going to, but no, no issues whatsoever. Um, and I think that the the key thing is is when you're taking a photograph of a scene, 
is to look confident, to look like you're supposed to be doing it. Look, don't look nervous, don't look scared, look approachable, look friendly. Um, and, and the people see you as see you differently. If you if you were taking a photo of somebody and you looked a bit shifty or you looked looked a bit nervous, that gives them reason to perhaps come over to you and say, hey mate, what are you doing? Like, you know, <laughs> if you look confident, if you think, they look over and see you and you think, hang on, is he taking a picture of me or is it the building? And, and to be honest with you, they think you're probably just taking a picture of the building and they just happen to be there. Um, which nine times out of ten is the case anyway. Because you're never using a subject in the picture that big in the frame. They're always kind of a, a really small human figure which just gives it a scale or there's just a shadow or a silhouette or something so yeah they're never really identifiable in the picture but always be, be prepared to show them the picture and of course if they if they feel that they don't like it or for whatever reason they shouldn't be in the country or something like that be prepared to delete it and uh, yeah it just means that you're going to enjoy the rest of your day and it means you're not going to have your confidence knocked but yeah just get out and, and enjoy it i mean i've had such a good time i've been walking around um Amsterdam for a day and a half on my own after the lads left and uh, it's been really good fun met some great people I think I've got some good images um, quite challenging at times I had to get down to 1.4 for one of the shots because there was literally no light whatsoever but I was determined to get it um, but most of the time I think I was around about 4.5 5.6 it's, it's been really since about one o'clock it went really throwing it down with, with rain and snow and very cold so I haven't had the luxury of being able to shoot like F11 or anything like that so just a case of keeping the ISO down um, keeping the shutter I had to set the shutter to a minimum of 1 60th um, just so that if I went indoors I could use low light and if I was outside then yeah, it's, I'd like to have gone a bit faster than 1 60th really but it, it, it is quick enough really I mean the, the minimum would be 250 really especially with bikes but as soon as I seen a bike and I wanted to pan with it, then I'd be sticking it down to 20th, 25th of a second or something like that just to get the motion in the background anyway. So, yeah, the ISO was pretty much on ISO auto. I was on aperture and shutter priority. Um, but I think I, I was shooting a black and white to get the tones as I normally do. But I think most of the time I'm probably going to be hoping to use a lot more of these images in colour because Amsterdam's got some lovely charming colours and the buildings have got lovely colours and there's some lovely lights glowing there around left, right and centre so yeah I think I'll hopefully be able to get a mixture of black and white and colours on this shoot uh, but I'm going to go now, absolutely freezing, I'm going to go grab back to the hotel, get my stuff and hit to, head back to the airport Thank you so much for watching. I had, uh, I've had some really, really good feedback from my street photography video, so I really, really appreciate that. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit the, the, the subscribe button, and uh, I'll definitely be doing more street photography videos very soon. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button, drop me a comment, let me know what you think of the images, and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.